He was without doubt America's most influential diplomat of the 20th century. So help me God. So help me God. As Secretary of State under President Richard Nixon, Henry Kissinger was both revered and reviled as the prime architect of U.S. foreign policy throughout the turbulent decade of the 1970s. Oh, Mr. Nixon embarks on the first visit of an American president to the People's Republic. A period that saw Kissinger broker the landmark deal that finally forced Washington to open up to communist China, forge arms control deals with the Soviet Union and end the war in Vietnam. Dr. Henry Kissinger assures Britain's Foreign Secretary that all America wants is peace. To some, he was the genius negotiator of his time, able to bring leaders together like no one else before or since. To others, a war criminal whose relentless strategizing in the name of American self-interest led to the death of tens of thousands of innocent civilians. Like in Chile, where Kissinger helped pave the way for the brutal dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet, and Cambodia, where he reportedly told US military to carpet bomb anything that moves in America's war against Vietnamese communists. But that he was a towering figure who shaped American and global politics is not in dispute. Kissinger came to America as a young boy, a German Jewish refugee escaping the Nazis before the start of the Second World War. Inside the White House, he later enjoyed almost unbridled power. Famously flying in secret to Beijing, where he met with Chinese leadership and helped to carve a delicate path between the world's two biggest superpowers during the height of the Cold War that's still the basis of their relationship today. It earned him almost royal status in China, as was evident just four months ago, when Kissinger was warmly welcomed by President Xi Jinping. And he was controversially awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1973 for his part in helping to broker an end to the Vietnam War, although critics argued he could have made the same deal years earlier and saved thousands of lives. Beyond foreign policy, the gravelly-voiced Kissinger relished his image as a political pin-up. He was known as a ladies' man and had a brand name that was unheard of for the typically staid world of backroom diplomats. But he was a diplomat like no other. But it's an honor to have Henry Kissinger with us. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. Kissinger would advise 12 US presidents, and while not every one of them agreed with everything he said or did, no one will ever doubt that his was a remarkable, if controversial, career. A young immigrant who went on to become the most influential architect of American foreign policy of his generation. Siobhan Kennedy. Well, joining me now is the Sundance and Multi Emmy Award winning filmmaker and author Eugene Jarecki. He directed The Trials of Henry Kissinger, a 2002 documentary film which examined alleged war crimes. Thanks for coming on the programme, Eugene. Um, he can't have liked the title of your documentary very much, can he? Well, we did hear some rumours about Dr Kissinger's uh, way of receiving the film when it came out. There was a very large 20-metre bill billboard hanging over Times Square, uh, rather near his office, that said, I think he's a war criminal, which uh, quoted the late Christopher Hitchens uh, in his estimation of Kissinger's career. But I will say that the movie... Uh, as you may know, it borrowed its title in a way from Christopher Hitchens' work, mm. uh, which was called a book called The Trial of Henry Kissinger, which I would suggest everyone read. It's a masterpiece. With our film, we changed the title to be The Trials of Henry Kissinger to include those trials and tribulations that Kissinger himself went through, which I think are necessary to have a full and mindful understanding of the man uh, from all directions. And what do you think was his core? What made him tick? I think he was someone who had a very cold calculus about what he viewed as the forces that run the world. Uh, they're not views that I agree with, and they're not views that many humanists would agree with, but I'm sure that Dr. Kissinger, were he here, would pat me very uh, pityingly on the head and say that, well, you don't understand the way the real politique of the world works and that, as he once said in an interview, uh, some people think that states can have their morality judged the same way that human beings can. Mm. But he went on to say, but sometimes statesmen have to choose among evils. He was very good at 
crafting phrases, but when I stepped back over time, I figured out that's just a trick loaded into that sentence. I don't think he's tricking us. I think he's tricking himself mm. into being willing to endorse a kind of cutthroat calculus as if humans don't choose among evils. We all do. Life is an endless process of trying to find the least worst in situations in an imperfect world. And I think Kissinger took license in a way that was very helpful to the American empire. Uh, and I call it that advisedly. We are mm. an empire, that's clear. And Kissinger was our front man willing to do the dirty work. I mean, there were some astonishing achievements, like cozying up to the Chinese, splitting the Chinese off from Soviet, the Soviet Union. But then, of course, he was also instrumental in overthrowing Allende's government in Chile, democratically elected. There was the carpet bombing of Laos, etc. You know, how do you think the cold eye of history will judge him? Um, you know, on a scale of one to ten, good guy. On a scale of one to day, one to ten, bad guy. Um, I think it's a bit more complicated than that. In that we are entering a world now that is so insecure and spiraling into man's inhumanity to man and man's inhumanity to nature with such velocity and with such significance for all of us that Kissinger almost seems quaint in his carpet bombing of Cambodia and Vietnam. He seems quaint in having illegally entered the United States into conflict in Cambodia without telling the American people or Congress. And I guess you could say in some macabre way hmm. that it's quaint the way he provoked the genocide unleash the forces of genocide in Cambodia. Today, right. we see genocide in many directions where the United States plays an unholy role. We all know that. And Dr. Kissinger okay. right. would argue that was necessary. OK. And that's, of We're course, going to leave it down. History Sorry, judgment. Eugene. Sure. Eugene, we've run out of time. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the program. Eugene, directly. No problem. There.